Big thank you to Tess, Chris Gilby and Harvey G for supporting the show through Patreon. Hi there and big welcome to Miniature Battle Cinematica with a Malifaux Battle Report with Asami Tanaka version 1 versus Arcanist Wildfiler Keris Reborn version 2. Now behind me you see a top view looking down on the battle, you can even see the models deployed up there as well, and you see stats for both sides. And obviously this is a little bit different compared to the normal style of how I've usually done the battle reports. But I, it's a new year so I wanted to try something new, however I don't think I'm gonna keep doing it in this kind of version. I truly believe in trying new things, and I've learned some new tricks with this kind of setup, but I'm not really gonna keep it this way, I think. I, I prefer the other look that I already have. But if you find anything entertaining, something you like from this kind of style that you want to have in the normal style we're gonna continue with in the future, the one we've already had for a while, then let me know in the comments below and I will try to implement cool things from this setup to the normal way we're showcasing battle reports here. Not gonna take up any more of your time, here we go, start the match. We give a good war, heralds, and we can make a move at the start of the match. Arcanist wins the initiative flip with a flip 13, forces and thunders to start the match. Lady Yumi activates and triggers from two worlds, drawing a card and putting a flicker token on the yokai. This triggers the yokai's ephemeral warrior, <coughs> triggering Lady Yumi's warped veil, revealing these two cards on top of the deck, a 4 and a joker. Choosing to discard the 4 to the grave, can't discard the joker though. First action charge, using Asami Tanaka's violation of reality to teleport, <coughs> using her generated action to attack at the Yurugumu flipping the black joker, and the Yurugumu flips a 5 so it's a miss, ultimately getting rid of the black joker to discard pile. Last action, Ocus. Kairis uses her pass token and forces Uni to activate once again. The Tengu reveals a 7 and a 13, keeping both on top, and then ends the activation with focus. Deacon Hellcrist activates. First action, bonus action, call to the Burning Man. Flipping a 10 crow, gaining the inbuilt wretch in ash trigger, dropping a peer marker. And last action, focus. Asami Tanaka activates. Now we already know about the 7 and the 13 of Mask. So first action, a mother's love using the 7, removing the flicker token from the yokai and giving it focus. And then everything is perfectly set up with from the maw they come. We already know that we have the correct value 13 and the correct suit Mask on top of the deck. Choosing to summon a Yurugumo. This will once again trigger Warp the Veil. Once again, keeping both on top. Using the 6, Mother's Love again to remove a flicker token, and replacing it with a focus on the newly created Yurugumo. And there, Asami Tanaka's activation ends. Waguru better is drawn to essence triggers. <coughs> Teleporting up next to the newly summoned Yurugumo. Wonder Vessel also triggers and draws a card and then discards this too, efficiently filtering through the deck. Wildfire uses a pause token, a manjaku activates, teleports with violation of reality, <coughs> discarding these two cards to discard with warp the veil, tactical action anchor only on the newly summoned Yurugumo, success and removing the yellow rubber band flicker token, and then his activation ends. Elijah Borgman activates. Last action focus. The demon cat activates. And last action focus. The fire starter activates. Light under their feet on Elijah Borgman, trying to push him forward. And then the Firestarter activation ends. 
the summoned Yurugumu activates and use Frightened Reminder on this Yurugumu, pushing it away. And then attack Elijah Borgman. The attack miss and the activation is over. Fire Golem activates. First action, draw a flame to teleport to Elijah Borgman. And then Flaming Fist on the newly summoned Yurugumu. It's a miss, Yurugumu flips a 10, while the Fire Golem flips a 3. Attacking again. The attack hits. And that ends the Fire Golem's activation. Waguru Bedari activates. She uses Lure on the Fire Golem. Success as the Fire Golem flips a Black Joker. Attacking the Fire Golem with her Tear Apart action. With a Puncture Trigger for a bonus damage flip. However, it's a weak hit, but also Flick it token in total a bonus flip on damage. And that ends Oguru Battery's activation. But Asami Tanaka is using her own soul to remove a Flick token from the Oguru Battery by taking two damage on herself. She can self heal and she's in a very safe position, so why not? Iggy activates. It is important to get his aura onto the enemy, so he needs to move forward. And last action, focus. Obsidian Uni activates. Red Joker on the attack to hit. Fire Golem flips a 9, so it's a hit. With Critical Strike trigger because there's no point giving this thing burning. 4 damage, moderate damage, well, pl because of the Critical Strike trigger. Once again, Asami uses only Soul to remove the Flicker token and take 2 damage on herself. The Eternal Flame activates. The Eternal Flame activates. While standing in an appear marker, it takes focus and gains burning. Last action, control the flame, wanna move the appear marker. Placing it on Elijah Borgman. And that ends the Eternal Flame's activation. Yokai activates. First action, bonus action, corrupting essence. Drops a ski marker that Asami Tanaka can later eat and trigger Ephemeral Warrior to teleport. <laughs> Dropping the 4 into the discard, keeping the 10 on top from the Warp the Veil trigger. And that ends the Yokai's activation. Kairis activates. And then she charged with a start from a peer marker. The Yoka uses flicker and flips a 10 while Kerix flips an 11. And she chooses to take the Rampage Trigger, because she has free or more burning and Anne can choose her own suit. Dealing 2 damage to the Yokai, but because it gained a Flicker token, Ephemeral Warrior triggers and it teleports. Flipping a 1 and 13 on the Warped Veil, dropping the 1 to the discard. Then Rampage happens, as Kairis flies in this direction. Crossing the path of Obsidian Uni and Waguru Battery. Bonus action, call to the Burning Man. Flipping a Red Joker for a definite success. And dropping a Pure Marker on Obsidian Uni herself and the Fire Golem. It's a precise hit on the Obsidian Uni. Dealing 1 damage to the stone demon because of its armor. 
and then rampage trigger again. Flying away and placing herself here next to the cat who's gonna taste a lot of burning soon. Last model to activate for Uni, Yurugumo. And then attacked Fire Golem. It is a weak hit, but the Yurugumo used full flicker token, taking a bonus flip, which also gives a bonus flip to damage, but also puncture trigger for an additional bonus flip. A maximum 6 damage on the fire golem, killing it. And drops a peer marker on death. Last action, focus. Last model to activate, fire branded. The attack miss, and round one is over. But at the end of this round, a few models takes damage from burning. Asami flips a 13 on initiative, and Keris flips a 7, and therefore Uni begins the match. Activating Asami Tanaka first. Keeping both cards on top, consume the Ski Marker to heal too. Normal action, Mother's Love on this Yurugumo. Flipping this already revealed 8, removing the flicker, replacing it with focus. Then, from the mall they come, naming a Yurugumo. We already know that there's a 9 on top, so we're spending a Soul Stone. And Sheet Fate for a success. Placing the Yurugumu on the balcony. And that ends Asami Tanaka's activation. Kairis activates. Attacking the cat. The cat uses both flicker and focus and gets a 13 on its flip. But Kairis sheets fate. Using a 13 from the hand. And the attack hits. 2 damage, killing the cat. Rampage trigger moving next to the Tengu, forcing the Tengu to take a test. And the Tengu doesn't take any damage from the Rampage trigger. Bonus action call to the Burning Man while she's standing in the middle of Uni. It's a success and she gets the Wretch in Ash, dropping a peer marker on all four models. Hand of Immolation attacking the Tengu. The Tengu use Focus and Flicker, flipping 3 cards, but ends up with a maximum of 5. And Keris flips an 11. The Tengu sheets in a 12, it's still a hit, but Keris can't sheet fate on damage as it's, it's a weak hit. Dealing 2 damage to the Tengu. Rampage trigger, she flies off like this again, dealing 1 damage to a lot of models. And then they have to make tests against the Rampage. The Tengu fails and takes another damage. Lady Yumi flips Red Joker and takes no damage. A Manjaku flips a 4 and takes 1 damage. And a Sami Tanaka flips a 12 and dodges the Rampage. Last action, walk. Keris runs off and hides. She basically flied through the entire crew of Uni and hide herself behind a tree. And her activation ends. Wagyur Bedery activates. Using Lure on Iggy. Uses a flicker token for a bonus flip. As Iggy is manipulative and will give you a negative flip. Iggy uses his focus, flipping an 11 and a 10. But it is still a success. This is both good and bad as we can now kill the Iggy, but Iggy's aura is now closer. Second action, charge Iggy. And attack Iggy with tear apart, gaining another flicker token, because Iggy is still manipulative. Waguro better sheets in a 12 off mask for the shove aside trigger, which could push Iggy into the middle of all the unis. Iggy sheets in a red joker and attack miss, he stays where he is. And Oguru Bedri's activation ends. Deacon Hellchrist activates. Uses both burning and focus for his flame blast. While the summoned Yurugumo flips a black joker. So it's a hit. 2 damage to Yurugumo, 1 damage to Iggy and Oguru Bedri. 
triggering mystery on Hurugu, giving Hoguro battery one damage. But this time the attack miss. Bonus action call to the burning man. But he flips a black joker and the action fails. And that ends his activation. The summoned Yurugumu at the front line activates and attacks Iggy. The attack miss. Now while he's doing this action, he's standing in a peer marker taking a damage from burn, gaining burning. He gives misery triggers and gives him a damage. Attacking again. And the Yurugumu's activation ends. Elijah Borgman activates. Call to the burning man. Attacks the Yurugumu with his greatsword. That is a hit. Killing the demon. And last action attacking at the Oguro battery with the greatsword. Scoring a hit. But there is also a smolder trigger to reduce burning and deal one more damage. So 4 damage. Only uses a soul stone to reduce the damage. Lowering it by 2. And that ends Elia Borgman's activation. Tengu activates. Flipping to fours because of Warp the Veil, dropping both to the discard pile. Second action, a song of night and day. Success, healing everyone for one damage but itself. And then Tengu's activation ends. The Eternal Flame activates. First action, control the flame. Placing the peer marker on Ogure Battery and the Obsidian Uni, giving both burning. This will trigger Iggy's Mystery and move the Ogure Battery two inches, giving her another burning. Second action, Flame Detonation. The action fails, so we're doing it again. Obsidian Uni takes a burning and a damage. And so does the Aguru Battery. And that ends the Eternal Flame's activation. A Manjaku activates. Charge. <coughs> and then assist on the Tengu, removing its burning. Removing a total value of 3 burning, so Tengu has 0 burning. And that ends the activation. The Firebrand that activates. Walks into the peer marker and gains burning. And used the burning for a bonus flip against Oguro Battery with his elemental bolt. Dealing 3 damage and Oguro Battery dead. Obsidian Uni activates. And attack Elijah Borgman. The attack hits, but it's a weak flip, but because of both focus and flicker, it becomes a bonus flip. Dealing 2 damage to Elijah Borgman, so same attack again. Once again using focus, gaining flicker for 2 positive flips. And Elijah uses burning and focus for the same amount of positive flips. However, it's an exact hit, gaining two minus flips, but because of focus and flicker, it becomes a straight flip. Dealing free damage to Elijah, and the Yurugumu's activation ends. The fire starter activates, flies and lands next to this tree, shoots at the Obsidian Uni with Conflagration, but the attack misses, so he shoots again. Using Reckless, taking a damage, becoming fast. But once again the attack miss and his activation is over. The Yokai activates, walks and charge Elijah Borgman. And attacks him with exotic weapons. Hitting with an equal number, so a double minus flip on damage. Dealing 1 damage to Elijah Borgman, and there the Yokai's activation ends. Iggy activates. This is the last model for Wildfire to activate. First action, charge the Yokai. And the attack hits. Wow, what a kid! 4 damage to the Yokai, killing the Yokai. Because of that, he doesn't have much more to do, so focus. 
and his activation ends. Lady Yumi activates. She walks and charges Iggy and tries to eat him. It's a hit, and Iggy must discard a card or die because of execute trigger. He does. Dealing 2 damage to Iggy, and that ends Lady Yumi's activation. Obsidian Uni activates and charges Iggy. However, here's an annoying thing about it all. Iggy has Misery, and as Obsidian Uni makes the charge action, he gains Burning, triggering Misery. So therefore, after the charge, we're instead of doing a walk, so that first Obsidian Uni walks away, triggers Misery, gains Burning, and is moved back into the Peel Marker, and from there he can make the charge action. So the total outcome is that he makes walk, charge, gains two Burning, and only one attack at Iggy. He flips a 1 while Iggy flips a 10, so it's a miss. And that ends the Obsidian Uni's activation. Last model to activate, the summoned Yurugumo. So Kairis is standing right over there and she has saved all her 4 pass tokens. So she's most likely going to be the first model to activate next round. And that's where Asami stands, quite unprotected. <coughs> So it charges and interacts, placing itself here. The reason it interacts is because Asami can eat ski markers and heal. Now it's going to die because it's supposed to have 3 flicker tokens, but Asami Tarnak is taking 2 damage to reduce flicker token down to 1 so it stays alive on 2 flicker tokens. And that ends round 2, where a few models takes damage from burning. <laughs> It's actually quite an even match. Round three. Kairi spends a soul stone to draw two cards. Wildfire wins the initiative flip and Kairi activates first. Bonus action call to the burning man. Success. She heals one and drops a peer marker on the Yurugumo and gains burning, attacking the Yurugumo with Hand of Immolation. Hit! Dealing 4 damage to it, and then Rampage through the Yurugumo and Asami Tanaka. The Yurugumo dodges the Rampage trigger, but Asami doesn't and take 1 point of damage. Both also takes damage from Wings of Fire, then attacking Asami with Hand of Immolation. <laughs> After cheating fate, it's a hit. Even though it's a minus flip, it's still moderate for damage. Asami uses a Soul Stone to reduce the damage. But she flips a 1 and reduces it by 1 damage, so in the end taking 3 damage. And then Rampage again, flying back to her friends through the Yoke, Tengu and Amanjaku. Killing the Tengu because of Wings of Fire and dealing 1 damage to Amanjaku. The Amanjaku sheets fate to stay alive from the Rampage trigger. And Kairi's activation ends. The Obsidian Uni activates. He's ruthless, so he doesn't care about Iggy's manipulative. Iggy uses focus, flips a 13, while the Uni flips a 6, so the attack miss. Attacking again! The Uni takes a flicker token for a bonus flip. It's a hit, however, because of defensive trigger from Iggy unimpressed, he will reduce the damage by 2. But on the other hand, the Obsidian Uni gains the critical strike trigger, but it's still a minus negative flip. But because of flicker, it becomes a straight flip. He flips a 9 for moderate damage, but after all forms of different reductions and critical strikes increase, it drops to 2 damage. So Iggy has 1 life remaining and the activation ends. Firebrand activates with intent to heal Iggy. So bonus action, embrace the flame on Iggy. Success, removing 3 burning from Obsidian Uni to heal Iggy by 3, going up to 4 life. <laughs> Using burning for a bonus flip, but flips a 4. On the other hand, Yurugumo flips a 2. But Yurugumo sheets fates and drops in a 5. But the firebrand can also sheets fates and drops in an 8. So it's a hit. 
dealing two damage, but also because of mystery from Iggy, one more damage. Fire again. But this time you flip a three and a two, and the Yurugumo flips a four. No one wanna cheat fate and attack miss, and the firebrand's activation ends. So the Yurugumo activates and attacks Elijah Borgman with its glaive. But the Yurugumo flips a one while Elijah flips a nine. But if he just hits, Elijah is dead. So he wants to cheat fate, but realize because of Elijah's defense and the cards only has in the hand, there's not a card that can cheat fate to score a hit here, so it's a miss. However, that's a tome on the defense trigger for Elijah, giving the Yurugumo burning, triggering Iggy to deal one damage to the Yurugumo. So last action, attacking again. Alright, so both actually flips Black Joker. Now the attack and defense are equal, so it's a hit. Doing exactly 3 damage to Elijah. Now Elijah is not a henchman and can't use soul stones, so he dies. Ugh. And there the Yurugumu's activation ends. The eternal flame activates. Bonus action control the flame. Success! Placing the peer marker between Lady Yumi and the Yurugumu. Then flame detonation on that peer marker. Hitting Iggy, Lady Yumi and the Yurugumo. Iggy fails but cheats fate so he succeeds ultimately with the shockwave test. Lady Yumi also cheats fate and dodges the shockwave. The Yurugumu flips a 13 and dodges the shockwave. And there the eternal flames activation ends. The summoned Yurugumu activates. <laughs> keeps both cards on top because of Warp the Veil. Then Frightened Reminder on Asami Tanaka. Flipping the 11 we've already seen for a success and pushing her back towards into that tree. Or just a small distance so she's a little bit further away from Kairis. Also interacted dropping a ski marker so Asami will be able to heal and eat them. And then the Yurugumo's activation ends. The Firestarter activates and shoots at the Yurugumo. Both flips a 12 and it's a hit. Dealing 2 damage to the Yurugumo, but because of Iggy's misery, one more damage. A total of 3, so fire again. But this time the Yurugumo flips the Red Joker, so it's a miss. The fire starter uses reckless, takes damage, gains fast, and attacks a third time. But once again, the Yurugumo flips a 13, while the fire starter flips a 6, so it's a miss, and the fire starter activation ends. A Manjaku activates. Anchor Uni twice, remove two flicker token, and his activation is over. Deacon Hellcrist activates and shoots with a flame blast on the Yurugumo. Uses burning for a bonus flip, flipping an 8. But Yurugumo uses flicker and flips an 11. Deacon Hellcrist sheets in a 10 and score an exact hit. Flipping 3 cards dealing weak damage. However, that's 1 damage and that's damage with burning so Iggy triggers and deals one more damage to the Yurugumo, killing it. Bruh. Hope you like my voice acting guys. Bonus action, call to the burning man, success, healing one life. Then translocate ritual, move Iggy, moving him back to safety. <laughs> and then Deacon Hellcrist activation ends. Asami Tanaka activates. Bonus action, insatiable hunger, eating the ski markers to heal. Then, from the maw they come, naming Tengu. She needs to flip a mask of eight for a success. She doesn't do that. Because she has the mask of eight in her hand, summoning the Yurugumo. Sorry, I meant Tengu. Triggering Warp the Veil, happy about those cards, leaving them both on top. So she uses the two cards A Mother's Love twice, once on each of the two summoned models. To remove Flicker and replacing it with Focus. And then Asami Tanaka's activation ends. Kairis immediately uses a pass token that she got from the summoned model. So Tengu activates and uses Song of Night and Day twice. 
and heal everything around it twice. That was a very big heal. And then the Tengu's activation is over. Last model to activate, Iggy on the wildfire side. Charging. The Obsidian Uni and smacking it. It's a hit. But it's a weak hit, so two damage. But also giving burning, which means that his mystery will trigger and deal one more damage. But because of armor, it's a total of two damage. Attacking again, now using the opportunist ability, removing the burning from the Obsidian Uni to get a bonus flip. Once again, it's a hit. And a red joker on damage. What a kid! This means that he will do 5 damage total, but because of armor, it's a reduction of 4. However, the Obsidian Uni also gains burning, so in the end of this turn, it will take a damage to die. Pretty good turn though. Here, Iggy ends its activation. Last model to activate, Lady Yume. However, Mister is a little bit annoying here. She begins by making a walk action. But because she started this move inside a peer marker, she gains burning, triggering mystery. Iggy could now give Lady Yumi damage, but decides to move her two inches. To a position from where she can't attack Iggy, also can't charge Iggy. Basically Iggy is using Obsidian Uni here to protect himself against Lady Yume. So instead Lady Yume is attacking Kairis. <laughs> They have the exact same attack and defense value. Lady Yumi flips a 12 and Kairis flips a 13, so it's a miss. Now, because the Obsidian Uni is going to die ultimately, Lady Yumi is using Consume and Eat the Obsidian Uni, healing herself for one. And then Obsid Lady Yumi realized that she's misplayed this entire round. What she should have done in this activation is first just use the bonus action to eat the Obsidian Uni instantly, and then the Obsidian Uni won't be in the way for Iggy, and then she can just charge Iggy, or just ignore Iggy altogether and just charge Kairis and attack Kairis twice. It was a little bit more of a like needs to kill the Iggy but couldn't really get there but really wanted to but here the activation ends and the round ends where people take damage from burning <laughs> And then it's Kairi's turn, however she's a special case. She currently has 9 burning and will send 4 damage anywhere. She could kill the Amanjaku, but decide to send all the 4 damage at Lady Yume. Dropping Kairi's down burning by 4 to 5. Round 4. Both sides sheets fate and Uni starts the match. Asami Tanaka activates first, trying once again to summon a Yurugumo, using a soul stone for it. But also sheets fate to succeed. Warp the Veil trigger. Revealing a 13 and a 4, discarding the 4 to discard. Second action, Mother's Love, flipping the 13 to replace the flicker with focus for the newly summoned Yurugumo. And after running away from Keris, her activation ends. She begins with a hand of immolation on Lady Yume. Sheeting in a 12 to get a hit. Dealing 2 damage to Lady Yume. But this time we're using the Touch of Madness trigger, forcing the opponent to discard a card at random. Discarding this Ram 2. Now if Keris can attack and hit the Lady Yume, Lady Yume will be dead. So same attack, same action, targeting same thing again. It's a hit, dealing exactly 2 damage, and madness trigger again. No, sorry, Rampage trigger this time, but Lady Yumi is dead. With Rampage, Kairis flies here touching nothing, and then charges Asami Tanaka. Asami flips a black joker, while Kairis flips a 5, so it is a hit, with a straight flip. And Kairis sheets in a red joker on damage, dealing a total of 6 damage on Asami Tanaka, who does not have any more soul stones to reduce this damage. Then, Rampage trigger. Because of Wings of Fire, Asami immediately takes damage, and then she needs to dodge the Rampage trigger, or she will die. 
She flips a 1. She needs an 8. Reveals her hand containing 3, 4, 5, 6, but nothing else. Which means she can't cheat fate to survive this, and Asami Tanaka dies. But also, Uni concedes. Because at, from this point, they can't really do that much. Also, if Asami Tanaka actually would survive in the end step, Keris will burn her to crisp with her little trick. And here, the match is over.